Okay, um, so uh, we've, uh, we're very lucky to have several readings that um, members of the Dorothy Dunnett Society have recorded for us. And the first one today is Cathy Lewis, um, standing at the side of the River Thames, reading from the Ringed Castle. Um, just just a, a quick warning, you may need to turn up your volume quite high on this one. Um, it seems to lose a little bit when it's being transmitted across Zoom. Sorry, Simon. I was just going to say the, the quality of the videos isn't that great. The videos are fine. We're going to put them on YouTube um, after the meeting so you can see them like that. Unfortunately, transmitting them across Zoom makes them a bit juddery. This is a bit quiet. Apologies for that. Hi, it's Cathy Lewis here. I'm standing on the foreshore of the River Thames on a May evening. Um, across the river from me, you can see the Globe Theatre. And then if we go round to the right-hand side up the river, um, the strongly illuminated bridge is Blackfriars, where um, the location, of course, of Philip is the Brothers. And if we go back down the river, past the Globe again, the next bridge is London Bridge. And beyond that is the Tower of London and Greenwich and Gravesend and then the sea. I'm going to read a piece um, for you from Ringed Castle. It's at the end of the book when Lyman thinks he is able to return to Russia. The barge which Don Juan had commanded for Mr. Crawford and his five friends was a fine one with a gay canopy and eight oarsmen in livery who made the boat fly after its shadow in the ripe evening sunlight so that it shot London Bridge like a greyhound. It also held, between the canopy and the rowers, a captain and four armed militiamen. The King of Spain was anxious to speed his embarrassing guests toward Russia. But Gravesend, 24 miles off, was not to be compassed in an evening. Just short of Greenwich, as the first riverside lights were spiraling Spiralling down through the water, the port side rowers began pulling hard for the right bank, and the captain, leading over with, leaning over with deference, indicated to Mr. Crawford from Russia that lodging had been arranged here for his party that night. Mr. Crawford from Russia, in the midst of a white, hot, furious quarrel which had lasted all the way from Westminster, acknowledged the information and continued in an undertone to issue commands to his subordinates. Fergie Hodham, for the 500th time, said, Yes, we hear you, but if a man says he's going to Muscovy, how do you mean to impede him? You are not going, Lyman said. No one is going but myself. You can get off the boat here and you can spend the night, if you wish, at the King of Spain's expense and then you can go to the devil but you are not boarding the Primrose, any of you. As the sky darkened, the lights on either bank became suddenly stronger. The rowers, shipping oars, were drifting gently towards a low landing stage. Behind them, another boat was coming to shore. Anyway, Guthrie said, if you can go to Russia with impunity, why should we be less adequate? The other boat, swinging across, appeared to be heading straight for them. The captain of the royal barge, confident in the power of his gilded prow and three silken banners, gave a cursory shout. The other boat barely altered direction. Lyman said, I am exceedingly tired of this argument. So, said Guthrie, are we. He was looking over his shoulder. Immediately, it seemed, the other barge, not quite as large as their own, moved quickly forward and hung floating side by side with the barge from Westminster. An outburst of shouting exploded. It was too neat to be quite accidental. Lyman leapt to his feet. He had backed weaponless, one hand on the straps, straps of the canopy when someone seized him from behind and someone else from the side. In the rocking boat, two might have failed to hold him, but when a third hard body flung itself on him, helped by another, and yet another, 
the combined weight was enough to dislodge him. Francis Crawford was dragged from his barge and thrown headlong into the other boat while his assailants jumping landed on top of him. Then the second boat, pushing off, fled with its captive across the dark water. Ooh. Okay, and with that, I think we're switching over to me. So I'm going to start trying to share uh, my screen uh, now. Okay, uh, we're going to have a quiz um, coming up uh, in a few minutes, so hopefully you've got your paper and uh, um, pen uh, ready to do that, but uh, I'll just start this uh, off. Okay, and we're going to have another reading now from Anne Ochtaloni, who's going to read from King Hereafter, Anne's unfortunately even quieter than the than Cathy, so you'll need to take uh, take special care to pay attention to this, but it's uh, really worth listening to. Hello, I'm Anne Octoloni. I'm in Fife in Scotland, and I'm sitting at Balmerino on the southern bank of the River Tay. A thousand years ago, Thorfinn, King of Alba, turned his dragon boats into the mouth of this river and rowed their way steadily upstream. He would have passed this point, and on the other shore, travelling about 12 to 14 miles inland, he would have found, as you would still find today, Lambs. Travelling further upstream, he would pass Dunsinane Hill and then on to Schoon to Burnham and finally at the head of the water to Dunkeld and the monastery from where they believed all of Scotland could be controlled. The reading today brings Thorfinn's story to a close. Thorfinn saw people quickly while the flat pl plot of ground was being roped off. For lack of firm ground elsewhere, a duelling spot near Lumfannon had been chosen, and it had been agreed that the lady his wife would be hostage for the safety of his nephew and enemy, Malcolm. Good. Having agreed to it, Thorfinn placed the matter with firmness to one side of his mind and began to look for the people he wanted. There were not so many, Bishop John and Bishop Hrolf, because the disjointed kingdom would not make matters easy, and there were some ways of solving the problem. Gillacher and Morgan and Scandlane and some of the other young men who would need all the tact they hadn't yet got to survive. Tuathel, whom he had lost temporarily, and Lulach, his stepson, who kissed him and said, As soon as my mother leaves, I shall be gone. I have nine months, I told you. He paused. What are you thinking? That I didn't warn you of this? But I am only a river with all my voices, and no two drops of water reflect the same way. What am I thinking? I was wondering, said Thorfinn slowly, what story the river will carry of me. Lola smiled his sweet smile, and his swan white hair shone in the sunshine. So many stories, he said, that a thousand years from today, every name from this world will have faded, save those of yourself and your lady. That is immortality. The dream of every Viking. Instead of truth, I think today you offer me comfort. You were always kind, Thorfinn said. Help her, Lulach. You know me, said Lulach. You know me now. I will say anything. Thorfinn met Tuathel at the door of the hall, where it was hard to talk because of the excitement, with people pressing about and shouting to him. They appeared to be quite confident that he would defeat and kill Malcolm. He said to Tuathel, I'd better talk to them presently so that they know what to do. And Thorkel Fostry has to be told. He'll make no effort to stay. The wind is still from the south, Tuathel said. They'll get to Orkney in time. His face looked grim and drawn. The lady is wondering why Malcolm accepted the challenge. 
And I must confess, so am I. Thorfinn said, oh, Malcolm knew I would lose. He has that kind of conceit. And to Athel said, my lord, you must prepare her. Thorfinn said, she is prepared. As she was Gilcommon to Mori, so she will be Thorfinn to Alba. You too will be needed. Under you, the land will hold steady. I cannot care, to Athel said. This is a day when the priest needs a priest. I cannot feel God's friendship. I cannot accept such an ending. Why not, if I can, said Thorfinn. I failed. I pay the price of my failure. There is no injustice there. As to the good or bad of what I have done, I am content to leave others to judge. His face was calm. He said, forget that Scotia ever existed. There will still be Alba and Orkney. To Groa, he said, they will take you to a tent and you will not look out. I will not look out, she said. He said, you have everything there is of me, save a little I gave to my people. Now you hold that as well. And last of all, when he had released her and moved to the door to stand outside, where all the sky was enclosed with thick hills and dark, heavy forests, he said, because he could not prevent himself, when next you stand by the sea, say goodbye for me. So I hope you enjoyed that. I don't know how well that came across, but the sound of the waves lapping and the bird song singing is very evocative. So if you didn't get the full effect um, there, then, uh, then as I said, it, it'll be up on the website um, in a day or two. So uh, now we're going to start off uh, with the quiz. So don't forget, uh, later on we might have a chance to talk about uh, Memories of Dorothy done it. So if you want to share any, um, please put memory in the chat for the moderator, Jenny, to note down. Um, this time at the end of this session or later sessions, we'll, uh, we'll ask you to share. Okay, so uh, there's four rounds uh, in this quiz. Uh, the first round is called Old Reeky. Um, for later rounds, I hope you're up on your Scottish uh, pop music. Uh, and I'm just going to say, because I mean, is that um, any Scots, and by that I mean anyone living in Scotland or who is Scottish and living elsewhere, deduct 10 points from your score because you have knowledge. <laughs> uh, anyone who is from elsewhere in the UK, deduct five points from your score. Uh, so to give it a little bit of... Uh, uh, Little bit of fairness to the proceedings. So uh, let's uh, let's click on with this. What is the Queen's official residence in Scotland? What is the collective name for the following streets? Castle Hill, Lawn Market, High Street, Cannon Gate and Abbey Strand. Which public building in Edinburgh was originally estimated to cost 40 million pounds and ended up costing over 400 million pounds? Um, you'll be marking your own answers, sir, by the way. What is the official, what is the name of the official residence of Scotland's first minister? Edinburgh's nickname is Old Reeky. What does Old Reeky mean? I'm going too fast. Tell me to tell me to slow down. Too fast. <laughs> Absolutely. So tell me when you're caught up. Prince's Street Gardens replaced what wet feature?
which is older, the Bank of England or the Bank of Scotland? How many different sets of banknotes are accepted in all Edinburgh shops? Which Edinburgh railway station is named after a historical novel? If you don't know, just write down any Edinburgh <laughs> railway station that you know the name of. You might get lucky. Where is the one o'clock gun located? Okay, we're now going to move on to the picture round, as I put there, round as it should be. So you'll get one point per answer for this. Round. <laughs> Indeed. Which film series used this location multiple times? And I'll tell you, it's the Glenfin and Viaduct. Mm. What's this stadium? Don't know. <laughs> is this rock formation a baby? Is it young? Is it adolescent? Is it youthful? Is it old? Is it ancient? Or is it crumbling? Only one answer is correct out of those. <clears throat> what do these three bridges cross? What's her nickname? What is this the symbol of? What baby was crowned using this? I should probably say what baby was first crowned using this? There may have been more than one baby crowned using it. What is this artwork? For which sport was this the Royal and Ancient International Headquarters? What famous massacre happened here? And I'll give you a clue, it wasn't the Boston massacre. What is this advertising? Whose mother lived here? Which city are these things related to? Which route is this? What's the name of the route that's outlined on the on the map? Oh, that's the. Um... Don't say out loud. Whoever it was that wasn't on mute there. <laughs> Whose husband is this? Okay. So we'll now move on to round three, the music rounds. You get one point for the song, 
one point for the artist and one point if you can recognise the location. How but, many have we got? Because it means I'm leaving, running out of space on my paper. Get some more paper. I, I think, know, but how many there's questions? Ten, there's Thank ten. You. Yeah, there's ten more um, questions in this round, and I think there's other ten or fifteen in the next round. Thank you. That's brilliant. Yeah, and of course for this one, there's three answers for each uh, each question. Cool. Thank you. So uh, yeah, the locations aren't related to the tracks. Uh, and the first picture that you'll see isn't part of any question. Clocks put up signs saying position closed And secretaries turn off typewriters and put on their coats And janitors padlock the gates for security guards to patrol And bachelors phone up their friends for a drink while the married ones turn on a chat show And they'll all be lonely tonight Good to go yet, Leslie? If you just give us a little bit longer between songs so we can scribble down what we know, that would be really good. No, 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 generally not. Oh. So, okay, I'll start up again now. Thank you. for that picture either. Okay, have you all written down the, your answers?
And now we'll come on to Scott's vocabulary. One point per answer. So what is the standard English uh, equivalent of these terms? And I dread that I've got some of the answers to these wrong and I'll get corrected by the Scots on the call. Sorry, Simon, could you just slow down a little bit? Thank you. What was four? Late. Right. Okay, so uh, there were four rounds there. So uh, maximum of 10, pound, uh, 10 points for the first round. Uh, it's, the next one is also uh, 10 points. The maximum round for the, uh, the music is the 30 points and vocabulary is 10 points. So a maximum of 60. And if anybody claims to have 60, well, <laughs> I'm not sure I'll be falling for that. Okay, so here are the answers. So mark your own. The Queen's official residence in Scotland is the Palace of Holyrood House. It is not Balmoral. The collective name for the following streets is the Royal Mile. The public building that was so underestimated was the Scottish Parliament. And the official residence of Scotland's first minister is Butte House. Uh, Edinburgh's nickname is Old Reeky. Old Reeky means Old Smoky. Prince's Street Gardens, and I'm hoping that everybody on this call would have got the answer to this one. Replace the wet feature known as the Norloch. Which is older, the Bank of England or Scotland? It's the Bank of England. It's founded a year um, before the Bank of Scotland. As for how many different sets of banknotes, banknotes are accepted in all Edinburgh shops, uh, the Bank of Scotland issues banknotes, as does the Royal Bank of Scotland, the Clydesdale Bank, and uh, Bank of England notes are also accepted uh, universally within Scotland. Um, there are other banknotes, sterling banknotes, such as banknotes from Northern Ireland or the Channel Isles or the Isle of Man, but they would not be universally accepted uh, within Edinburgh. Also, some shops will take euro and possibly dollars, but again, not universally accepted. So the answer is four. The Edinburgh Railway Station, named after a historical novel, uh, that was named after Sir Walter Scott's novel, Waverley published in 1814, so Waverley Station. I'm not aware of a historical novel called Haymarket, but you know, if anybody knows of one, do, uh, do tell me. The one o'clock gun is located in Edinburgh Castle. So if you listen, you can hear that through a large part of Edinburgh um, every day except Sunday at one o'clock, and you couldn't go and obviously see it being fired in Edinburgh Castle. Okay, so we'll move on to the picture rounds now. The film series, Harry Potter. 
the stadium, Hampden Park, that's Scotland's national uh, football stadium. The rock formation, it's old because it's the old man of store on the Isle of Skye. The three bridges cross the fourth. Uh, it's the fourth railway bridge at the top, built in, I think, the 1890s, um, uh, wonder of the world uh, at the time. In the middle is the 1960s, I think, uh, uh, suspension bridge. And the, uh, the one at the bottom is the most recent bridge, uh, and it's Cable Stay Bridge, uh, recently called the Queensbury Crossing. This, of course, is Nessie. This symbol is the Glasgow subway. It's one of only two underground uh, railway systems in the UK, the other one being, of course, London. The uh, baby that was first crowned using this, uh, Mary Queen of Scots. Uh, I think her son, James VI, was also crowned uh, as a baby or very small child after she'd been forced to abdicate. This artwork is the Kelpies. And this is St Andrews, uh, which uh, was the international headquarters for golf. That isn't actually what the question's asking, though, is it? Go back. Oh, sorry, yes, it's golf is the answer. You are correct. Thank you. Yes, I think the acceptable answer for that one is to be clear is golf, uh, not St Andrews. So uh, what famous massacre happened here? The Glencoe uh, massacre. And this is advertising Scotland's national drink, which is uh, a lovely amber nectar known as iron brew. Whose mum lived here? The Queen's mum lived here. So the answer is the Queen. Castle of May in Scotland. Which city? Dundee. Grand Theft Auto was created in Dundee, which has got a significant IT games uh, presence, uh, along with the Beano comic. That uh, character on the front of the Beano is called Dennis the Menace, slightly different from the American version of Dennis the Menace. That is the North Coast 500. And that is Dorothy Dunnett's husband, uh, Sir Alastair Dunnett, uh, editor of the Scotsman newspaper, also somebody quite senior in Thomson Oil uh, at one time. Simon? Yep. Hasn't uh, Newcastle got an underground? No, it's got, metro, it's got a metro, but it's not a subway. It's a light oh, rail system. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll go through this again, but you can see the answers uh, appearing there. Uh, so as we.
I'm finding them very hard to read. Okay, so I'll stop. We're, we're running a little bit over time, so uh, I'll, I'll stop for a couple of seconds. But obviously, the complete set appears every time we have a transition, and I'll pause a bit at the end. Most of his clocks put up signs saying position closed. And secretaries turn off typewriters and put on their coats. And janitors padlock the gates for security guards to patrol. And put on a chat show. And they'll all be lonely tonight and lonely tomorrow. I'll accept 500 miles for this. Uh, if you haven't got, I'm going to be open bracket 500 miles, close bracket 500 miles, then uh, you'll be forgiven for that. Also for the previous one, which was Lulu and the Lovers, I'll accept Lulu. So I'll just hang on. Uh, anybody not caught up yet? Okay, so it sounds like you. Simon, are you muted? Are there supposed to be answers with these, Simon? We're getting no answers. We're just getting the quiz again. Simon, you're on mute. Thank you, Anne Buchanan. Yes. Free to give us the answers. Uh, I can give you some of them. That one, well, it depends. I would call them turnips alternately, but some of the English folk might call them Swedes. Not yeah. this English person. I said some. <laughs> I'll accept Swedes or turnips. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just checking whether it's actually moving on. Well, that one is kind of like really hot, horrible, nasty, wet weather that kind of goes down the back of your neck and it's just, ugh. We get it in Yorkshire too. Yeah, we just have a one word that does about 16 instead. Yeah, it works. Yeah. Really.
Uh, Peely Wiley is usually sort of thin, pale, and somebody didn't leave the tea bag in long enough. A lung is a chimney. Ah. Now that one I don't know. Pam? It's Scott's willing to talk about Hoffa Gandhi. That's not one I know. That's a I know that. I know that one. Go on. But I'm afraid that I was brought up in a family to <laughs> say the real meaning of it. And we just said, you get up to tricks. <laughs> but I think it's got a sexual connotation, but we never said that in my family. <laughs> it's a bit of how's your father. It does. Yeah. <laughs> It is. Never heard it. <laughs> <laughs> I was obviously brought up in a better high school. <laughs> yes, it's so, a any, Scottish thing. Any <laughs> variants of sexual congress? So. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone? Well, he's coming up. Yeah, child. Also in Northern England. Yeah. From Norse. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Comes from Barn. Still used in the top end of the Yorkshire Dales. New Year's Eve. Yeah. English is still using three words when one will do. Little, small. Tiny. Hmm? Tiny. Don't know Northern that one lights. either. Northern, Northern lights. lights. Northern lights. Oh, yeah. of course. Northern lights. That means dirty. That's the loo. That's the toilet. Oh. Well, it's also so toilet is the is the answer that I had for that. Okay. We use that one in Yorkshire as well. Surely good. Okay. Oh yeah. So yes. does anybody have more than 50 points? Don't forget Scots <laughs> subtract or Scotlanders subtract your 10 points. Uh, rest of the UK subtract five points. Anybody got more Scots than 40 have no chance. points? Please. 23.31. Okay, anybody got more than 35 points? I got 35 less my five. So no. Okay. <laughs> Any, anybody got more than 30 points? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay, so 34. Yes. yes. So that, you got 34? I did. Okay. <laughs> Are you subtracting your 10? I got 35. Oh. Before or after subtracting? I subtracted my 10. No, not you, Anne. Right. Me, I, I got 40, subscrap, subtracted 5 because I'm in Yorkshire and got 35. Mm -hmm. I'm on. Yeah, it's 20, so. 20, 20. Sorry? I'm double okay. checking. Did, did anybody get. Uh, did anybody else get 45? 30, I got 30. Sorry, anybody else, sorry, get more than 35. Oh, sorry, who was it speaking? I can't actually tell. That was, it's Fraylin, Fraylin Close Hainsworth. Oh, hi, Fraylin. Freya. So you win, uh, assuming you haven't got them all, you win a Dorothy Dunnett's Guide of your choice. Whoa, and I have just bought the Orkney one, so it'll have to be one of the others. Yay. Do you oh, want to nominate? Do you want to nominate now? Oh, Edinburgh, I think. Okay. I'm sitting okay. here with a really silly grin on my face. <laughs> and I'm bright pink as well. I wasn't expecting to win that. Okay, right. We were supposed to have a break until 17.45, but we're actually at 17.45 now. Can I ask, um, do we have Deirdre on the call yet? derived all right okay so what what we'll do is we'll have a, a five minute break at this point uh unless deirdre would like a 10 minute break no let's have a five minute break so i'll see you at uh well in five minutes so 1750 550 and variants of those times as you can see and I will stop sharing so that uh, right. Tom can Tom or Deirdre can get ready. I'm so proud of myself. I got 27. <laughs> Most of them were terminology. <laughs> All right, you were good. I just bombed on everything musical. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. I thought I was doing the Irish Rovers at one point. I got Lulu. <laughs> I was surprised at how many I got for the music. I was. No, that's I was really, surprised. really good, Lily. That's really no, good, I Lily. I, I, I didn't get any. Uh, I, I got Shout. That was it. Shout. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I was I supposed to be looking for the title, the author, the, or the singer, or where it was. I didn't even bother looking at the locations. I was like, all right, who's singing this song? <laughs> right. <laughs> Two voices. I thought I recognized neither one, but I got Lulu. <laughs> I, I didn't notice it. Just know the songs. I never found the songs. Oh no! I don't know half the people who sing the songs that I know. Oh. And I, I didn't know the name of that one song. That's I, that one song that's contemporary. Like it's on the radio all the time. It's some popular band right now, and I I don't I've heard it. I don't know the name of it. <laughs> well, I didn't even I didn't realize you were supposed to do. The titles were count two. Otherwise, I would have had 500 miles, but okay, I'm not bitter. <laughs> I gave I myself a really half the disclaimer, so like, I knew that one. I was like, yes, one song that I know the name. <laughs> I, guess the, I guess the Irish Rovers were singing it, so that wasn't working. <laughs> not that it put me in the running for anything, but I did give myself a half a point for assuming that Sir Walter Scott was the novelist at the train station was named for so I put anything by Walter Scott it didn't make no, any difference indeed. I wasn't going to be winning anything anyway wow. no, I, I hereby revoke your half point <laughs> I figured there was no no train station named Ivanhoe so I guessed Midlothian <laughs> show up that's good <laughs> so, I don't think Simon will give me half a point for it. No. I think, I'm not sure I what that half have, point's going to do for you. <laughs> I think you have minus half a point for that, Elizabeth. Oh, that's sad. So sad. <laughs> At least you didn't say Quentin Durwood. I mean, that's... <laughs> You know, if they expand the subway system, I think they should name a station Crawford. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah, well, my sister's boyfriend would like that. She's an Edward Crawford. Uh, <laughs> just so long as they don't call it Lemon Stroke Lyman, because nobody ever agrees. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. His name is Alistair Crawford. So that's even a bit closer, the spell. <laughs> I want, That's very I want, desk. I once shopped a, a restaurant uh, quite near Gatwick Airport uh, in a hotel where they had um, Baku burgers on the menu. And I thought, well, I've got to have one of these. So I ordered a Baku burger. And three people arrived at my table and said, excuse me, you know how to pronounce this? <laughs> They said, nobody's ever called it a Baku burger. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's. They, and next time I went, they changed the title to Burger with Scottish Meat. <laughs> <laughs> well, Olive, 